Hey there, Patriots. Welcome to the front lines. Death Watch here to give you guys more intel so you can update your personal armory and fight back against the fake news media machine. And today we're going to be discussing why are video game adaptations so bad, right? Why is it that whenever we look at video game or uh, anime live action adaptations, why are they so bad? We already know the answer to it because we discussed it many times. But we're going to read from Newsy because they give a little bit more insight. Um, so, though book adaptations do relatively well in the box office, the same cannot be said of video game movies. Movies based on video games are historically awful, and that's not an opinion. Since 1993, the average Rotten Tomatoes score of all mainstream video game adaptations is a dismissal, uh, dismal 27%. Some call it a curse. Quote, the video game curse is just this reoccurring idea that video game adaptations have a really, really, really uphill battle to fight before winning over both casual audiences and hardcore fans, said Eric Francisco, uh, Ember Senior Entertainment staff writer. And fans have something to say about the low hit rate of video game adaptations. Uh, quote, they are either stray from the original video game theme and story, or they try way too hard to follow the game's theme and story without smartly adaptating it for the screen said brandon pope entertainment reporter um uh, quote they may not necessarily get the point of the video game said uh oh i don't know how to pronounce that um hayana i guess the d is silent hayana miss ds geek gaming influencer and founder of women of xbox even if you're not a gamer you're probably been disappointed about an adaptation of a favorite book maybe the movie tried to fit too much lore into just two hours or the actors didn't remind you of your favorite characters or maybe the world looked uh, nothing like you had envisioned in your head or played drew extensively on screen the difference between book and video game adaptations is that hollywood figured out how to adapt books kind of okay <laughs> i'm not gonna sit here and say uh sure <laughs> you know I'm, I'm gonna say sure on that okay and several other movies have won oscars right the same cannot be said for video games. The 1993 film Super Mario Bros. is credited as being the first uh, feature-length live-action film based on a video game, and it was not received well. All right, I remember, uh, I forgot, was it on Netflix? I think it was on Netflix, and I was watching it. I was like, yo, this is kind of dumb. <laughs> this is bad, okay? Uh, it just seemed like it was more of a parody, okay? So Super Mario Bros. did set the precedent of, for video game movies, uh, being incredibly bad since Louis uh, Louis Ellis Bedillo, Chicago-based comedian, uh, it could not be more different from the source material. Said Lee Shorten, actor in Ghost of Sh uh, Tsushima, uh, with a Rotten Tomato score of 28%, the film was heavily criticized for being overproduced yet having no real story, and for fans of the video game, it didn't live up to what made Mario games so beloved. I don't even think you could really add up. Uh, well, no, because now because with uh, Chris Pratt. Yeah, uh, we're we're supposed to have like another Mario Bros. Uh, like cartoon coming out or a cartoon movie. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that's good. But you know, who knows, right? You know, um, it's just terrible. But pretty much, you know, we're we're gonna skip ahead, okay, into this. But what we do know is that it's mainly because the people who are writing these uh these these series, um, don't know what the hell they're doing, right? We can look at the Halo TV series, right? We know for a fact. That the writers never played Halo. They were, you know, and it was just like, how is Paramount going to just come here and say, hey, we want a show that will get a bunch of people hyped for our new streaming service, right? We're going to have an exclusive Halo TV series, a game that a lot of people know that's popular within the, um, the geek realm. We're going to have this show be our flagship uh, advertisement, right? We're going to have all this crap. Right, I remember over and over uh, during the um, what was it, the Super Bowl? Where they had their ad there for the Super Bowl. They had all these ads showing off, "Hey, new Halo TV series coming to Paramount Plus. You gotta buy our service, right?" And then for all these people to come out here and say, "Oh yeah, we never played Halo. We don't know what Halo is. We never played it. We were just hired on to write this story, right? We played the first game." uh you know at, you know as soon as we got hired we played the first game uh we only probably spent you know they probably played on easy mode right to to be honest they didn't play it on normal difficulty they didn't play it on hard difficulty because they were like yo we're just gonna put it on easy mode fly through this game so we can get a feel for it right and it begs the it begs this question who are these people 
and why are they you know being hired to do these projects uh, uh you know when it came to the witcher series right i think henry cavill is the only person who knew like what the fuck the witcher was right the lady who's in charge of uh, read uh of the writing the witcher she doesn't know like what the witcher is henry cavill had to literally like give his input on certain scenes right because they killed roach the horse and he had to tell her like no 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 we got to change this because when you actually read the book series and all this other crap you know this is the type of relationship that uh Geralt has to his own you know personal horse roach okay and so you know because henry cavill right is a nerd right he almost missed his uh chance to become superman because he was too busy playing like world of warcraft right uh when Zack snyder was calling him uh to to uh you know come and audition for the role right he was playing world of warcraft and missed the call the first time right and he had to like call him back and be like hey, hey uh, i'm here i'm sorry you know it was crazy it was, that's a crazy story but henry cavill is literally the only from what i know the only real um you know hollywood actor who is a nerd he was a nerd first before he became famous okay that's unheard of right all these other people kind of have a feel for the characters or kind of have like this uh old reminiscent of you know hey yeah i i watched this you know comic book uh character before i may have read this comic book um long time ago you know or i watched all these other movies so i kind of have a feel for what the character is but no henry cavill was a is an actual nerd who actually uh read all of the witcher series books uh play you know pretty much uh you know if he was cast in any halo tv series he, he will know what master chief is he will know everything about halo right because he is a nerd okay all these other actors aren't that they're just there for a job right when it when and when you look to all these other writers i just had to sit down and say that these people really don't care they're just trying to say hey we're just attaching our name to something so we can get into hollywood right that's really what they want to do they they're not here they're not here to actually commit to a story to uh actually write a passionate story for the fans of a certain series they're just here to get their name out there to say hey i was a part of this show or that show and so they can get uh hopefully get into higher positions within hollywood right when you look at the lord of the rings right all these people they had to sit down with the writers these people don't know what the hell they're talking about when they when they when they were talking about lord of the rings they're talking about the characters as if they were like they were talking about um the main villain, right? I think the main villain is hot, and I think we can change him and all this other crap. It's like, no, the dude's supposed to be the literal representation of the devil, okay? That's who the main uh, the main bad of the entire series is supposed to be, the literal representation of the devil, okay? He's not some hot guy who's going to be changed, right? This ain't Lucifer, right? You're not going to make a, a Lucifer TV series out this shit, right? No, this is a old classic story of good versus evil, and that's the, that's the type of theme that you're supposed to stick with, right? That's the theme of the entire story. But, you know, no, we're going to come in here. We're going to infiltrate these uh, series and then rewrite it in, in our own fanfic way. OK, because that's what it is. Um, these people are here to essentially uh, virtue signal. They're not here to write a good, compelling series. They're not here to be true to the series that they attach their names to. They're here to hijack and write their own fan fiction to hopefully virtue signal themselves into much higher positions within Hollywood. Right. That's what that's the kind of conclusion I have came to. Right. That when you look at a lot of these TV series, it seems that a lot of these people fail. You know, they, they fail upwards. And that's crazy. As long as you are within the Hollywood sphere, as long as you're producing content, you know, you will always have a job. Right. That, that's kind of the theme. It seems what, that uh, that's happening right now in Hollywood. OK. And so you look at this uh this chick right here this the reason why i high, wanted to highlight this article is because this chick is completely just dumb okay uh we she claims that she is a you know a, a super geek right a, a heavy gamer right uh what one of us right one of our people right uh but she cl c comes out here and says the halo tv series is the gold standard for video game adaptations right paramount plus's halo series subverts expectations in brilliant ways making for a meaningful and unexpected video game adaptation, right? And let me mind you now, this article came out 11 days ago, right? All the fans of this Halo TV series has already came out and said, this shit is terrible. But she's over here saying this is the gold standard for video game adaptations, right? So the gold standard is to completely hijack any series, just hijack the series and just do whatever with the lore, right? 
because we already know, right? This is perfectly balanced. A successful adaptation has to avoid doing a few things. First, it shouldn't mess with the original source material. It did all that. It messed with everything, right? The Covenant, right? A xenom uh, xenophobic religious uh, order, right? Is now being in control by some female woman, right? A uh, 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 human, right? They they hate humans. They they look at humans as lesser, right? That's all in the lore. They look at humans as a lesser life form, right? They look at the Spartans as little demons, right? Uh, to their religious order, and they want to re-engage the Halo Rings to cleanse the world of all its sin, right? That's the literal, uh, you know, that's what the Covenant is. They are a religious order who worship the Forerunners, worship the uh the ring, the Halo Rings. That is literally the key to literally destroying, vaporizing all living life form on every single planet throughout the universe. Okay, well, throughout the galaxy. Okay, these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. And this lady right here, uh, who says this is gold standard, right? Yo, let's look at her bio, right? Uh, you know, whoever her name is, is an editor and features writer at Game uh, Games Raider based out of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, prior to the uh, prior to entering the industry, she got her master's degree in modern and contemporary literature at Newcastle University. Ooh, some preppy college, right? Uh, with a this what the hell? Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I got distracted by that individual in the right corner. Uh, yeah, if you uh, if you play that back, uh, look at the person in the right corner. They look odd. They look odd. They it, that distracted me a lot. Uh. Uh, dissertation focusing on t contemporary uh, indie games. She spent most of her time playing competitive shooters in in-depth RPGs and was recently on a PAX panel about the best bars in video games. Uh, what? The the best bars? Th that's literally what you wrote. Okay. <sighs> this this is this is gaming, guys. This is this is gaming journalism, right? In her spare time, you know, she rescued cats, practices her Italian, and play. Okay, I don't give a fuck. Okay. This is stupid. I'm done. Okay, this is <laughs> I'm done with that. That article. Let's get out of here, right? But from bounding in the comments, uh, the only actual gaming uh, pop culture journal, uh, I guess you call it this the only pop culture gaming journalist website uh, that's actually truthful, right? This is the last one because when you look at all these um, websites, and I don't think did I mention this in my last video? When you look at all these websites, it just seems like they're they're all just shills, right? They're all just shills, uh, sucking off all these publishers, all these studios. Because at the end of the day, if they are critical, right? And I might do a more deeper dive into this uh, subject in a different video. But it just seems to me they want to suck off all these um, studios and all these other Hollywood actors because if they are critical, right? And that's kind of I think that's this is the reason why. If there are any in any way critical of the actual content that is coming out to people, they will lose their jobs, right? They will lose all their exclusivity. They'll all right, because if IGN actually starts coming out and says all these comic book characters are stupid, uh, they have fallen from grace. Uh, DC, Marvel, uh, all these stories are terrible, right? Guess what? DC and Marvel are not going to give them uh, their little. Uh, exclusive access right we're not gonna they're not gonna be able to go uh out and actually sit down with these reporters and have exclusive interviews with them right they're gonna sit here and say nope we're gonna go to some other uh studio or other gaming journalist website that'll suck us off right that's literally all it is okay and so you know again here you have the actual breakdown right you know master chief takes off his helmet within the first damn episode he never he has yet to take off his helmet and show us his face in all of the game franchise. We still don't know who he is because at the end of the day, we really shouldn't care who is behind the mask. It's the person, it's the individual, it's the person wearing the armor, right? Uh, you know, that's that's really who, who who this person should be, okay? But, you know, now they decide, and they, I think they even killed him off. They killed him off and then Cortana takes over his body, right? Dr. Halsey, who is the mother of all the uh, Spartans, right? The Spartan project, uh, she gets, I think she gets killed, okay? And so they completely just destroy all of the lore, right? All the content that we have of all these video games, all these book series, all that shit just out the, out the damn window, okay? And yet this lady right here, who's a so-called, you know, a competitive shooter player, right? Uh, uh, one of our people, right? A gamer, 
tries to claim that yo this this tv series is the gold standard for video game adaptations you're a fool right you're a complete total shill lady um and then we look we can look to one piece right now we're talking about anime adaptations right uh, we looked at um cowboy bebop that was awful right because these people did not stick to the source material they decided that they're going to take these characters and rewrite them in their own way um you know put their own little twist and spin on the series which i don't you know, I don't mind people take you know putting a little bit of their own spin or twist on a series, right? When it came to the whole Death Note uh, series, right? I say when it when it comes to the live action Death Note that was on Netflix, I say that they should have put their own twist or spin on that even more, right? Um, the whole thing that they tried to do was take the exact same um, characters, right? They take the exact same characters from this uh, from the series. And try to integrate them in a in, a, in an American culture, right? Uh, it it wouldn't work. It it definitely did not work, right? I in my opinion, what they should have did was essentially took the idea of the Death Note, right, and just had their own characters, right, built their own story, built their own characters with the Death Note, because we already know that the Death Note can be given to anybody, um, uh, you know, from any, you know by any of these uh Death Angels, okay. They can go down, these Shinigamis can go down and give a Death Note to anybody that they find interesting enough to give to one, right? And so you could have just worked with that, right? Have your own characters uh, and how they're reacting to the idea of having a Death Note and how these different individuals are like, you could have just had like an anthology, right? Have, you know, we follow the story of all these different uh, people in America who have been granted a Death Note. And how they all interact with it, and how maybe some of them completely go crazy, end up getting killed or doing something, you know, uh, taken out, whatever. Or people who have, you know, found the Death Note and have completely rejected it. Okay, and we can, you know, go, through, you know, follow the story of that, right? You could have done a lot with the whole Death Note concept, right? Made it your own and had completely different and original characters and really had fun with that idea, right? You didn't have to have a copy-paste of the actual characters from the anime series and try to fit them in a more modern American setting, right? That's where you failed. That's where you fucked up, okay? Uh, you know, the live-action version in Japan, that was amazing. That was really good, okay? Now we look to One Piece, right? I pulled up this article a long time ago. The head writer of this uh this new live action one piece series says that she she literally compares luffy to kamala harris or kamala harris to luffy or you know vice versa right uh one of the netflix live action one piece head writers has caused controversy by comparing luffy to kamala harris okay twitter user uh tactical fiend highlighted instagram uh in twitter posts made by steven maeda in uh, january of this year there in maeda had compared monkey d luffy to u.s vice president kamala harris uh, Maida also compares Harris to the Will of D, okay? Uh, sure, but, okay, a trait within One Piece where characters with the initial D as their middle name are fearless in a strange desire for freedom uh, at to fulfill their desires, right? Yeah, this lady, this lady who used to be a uh, actual prosecuting DA, okay, who literally was drawing people, uh, black people, uh, in jail left and right for drug possession, right? Uh, you know, she has the will of D, you know, she values freedom and liberty and all this other bullshit. Get out of here, dude. It, again, these people are hijackers. They have no original dot. They're NPCs. They want to hijack these IPs that are super popular so they can then put their name, attach their name to it, uh, fill it all with so, all this virtual signaling bullshit. And so they can try to use that to elevate themselves into Hollywood uh, because it seems like you get uh, special rewards for virtue signaling, right? It doesn't matter if you can write a story good. You get actual, you know, because you get rewarded. You get rewarded for being uh, completely diverse, right? We see that with the gaming awards, right? Um, the uh, gaming journalist website that's all about LGBTQ and within the nerd culture. They had their own little gaming awards, right? Where they only gave out awards to video game series or uh people within uh, twitch streamers or uh, uh developers or whatever right because they have pronouns really that's really how they awarded things they nominated comic book series for only literally talking about being gay right if you looked up the um all these the the comic book series that they nominated 
I literally looked them all up in their descriptions. They are all just, hey, this superhero is gay and they're upset that they're not getting the attention that they deserve. Or this is a story about two lesbians who are super gay and all this other crap. Like literally, that's literally what the descriptions for all these uh, comic book series that they were nominating, okay, for, for an award. And it's like, yo, you can literally just have a gay uh, a gay character like Knight Rider from DC who's just a badass. Right, he's gay, and uh, but you don't care because he his whole entire storyline is just him solving crime, beating up people, and that's it. Right, he's a badass. He's his, his uh, armor looks cool as shit. Right, and that's all it is. All these other shows, all these other video games, uh, all these game developers who are getting awards all have the, of course, the bios and pronouns in their uh, Twitter handles, and it's like, yo, you're only giving these people awards because of their pronouns right you're not giving them you give them any awards because of who they are what they have achieved or if their game is fun or not okay we again i i said this when we look to ghost of shishima right ghost of shishima was a game that sold out immediately right they sold out immediately versus the last of us 2 right and uh marvel right uh kamala khan the new marvel's um miss mr fantastic right that's literally what she is she's a dock off mr fantastic her character got uh her voice actor got an award for playing uh the best character role right and it's like that's bullshit look at ghost of shishima amazing voice acting right the game was already amazing sold out high praise was on everybody's top list of games that you need to play last of us 2 won game of the year why well because we all know why because that game was virtue signaling right? they were like hey not only is our main character now a lesbian but we're also having another main character who's also trans okay and all this other uh diversity bullshit that's why it got game of the year right why did kamala khan uh get uh voice actor of the year right uh, uh character of the year right even though the marvel game that she was in was dead within the first two weeks people hated it People wanted refunds because the game was literally a microtransaction hellhole. Because of the the whole the 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 fact that they are all shills and they're trying to push an agenda. They're trying to push the whole diversity agenda, despite the fact that this game literally from Japan, right? Uh, talking about Japanese culture, right? A, a good historical period within Japan where the Mongols invaded the country, right? That's all your diversity there. But guess what? Nobody cared about the device diversity because the game was so fucking good. It was cinematically good. The voice acting was good. The characters were real. Okay, the situation was a real situation that happened in real life. An actual deep dive into a historical event in Japanese ho uh, history won no awards, right? It, it got nominated, but it didn't win Game of the Year. Uh, none of those voice actors won Voice Actor of the Year for, for their roles. Because, why? Because they are a bunch of virtue signaling shills who just want to suck off all these uh, production companies so they can get their moment to shine uh, in Hollywood or whatever, right? It, it's, it's retarded. It's, it's, it's just, this is how the world is working now, right? And, you know, we have Tom Holland, you know, now trying to be um, the Dan, um, Nathan Drake. I forgot. Yeah, Nathan Drake. I, I, I was trying, I can't remember. I, all these characters uh, in my head is kind of spinning right now. Uh, but, you know, when I saw, when I went to go see um, Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, I, I, I remember seeing, like, it, it was that trailer. It, I, was, I saw Tom Holland, and I saw him in, that, in his outfit. I was like, is this supposed to be, like, the new Uncharted series? Uh, like, I have no problem. You know, I don't think Tom Holland's a bad actor, right? I have no ill will towards Tom Holland. I think he's a pretty good actor. But when he, it, for him to be playing this character, right, to be playing uh, Nathan Drake, the dude is so skinny. He's so skinny. He's so lengthy. Like, they literally had him take his shirt off. I'm like, dude, you got no uh, defining ab work, right? You have no abs. You have no muscle. You're, you're, you're literally like a kid. Okay, the dude's like 20-something years old. He's older than me. I think he's older than me or probably the same age as me, right? I have more skin on my bones. I look far more buffer than this guy, right? And I'm like, dude, you're supposed to be an action hero. Uh, you know, there was like this old meme of like, um, you know, action heroes back in the 80s and 90s, right? You had Arnold Schwarzenegger. You had uh, Sylvester Stallone. You had Chuck Norris, Bruce Lee, and all these other uh, really, you know, 
big buffy motherfuckers right you know whoop my ass uh any day of the week okay uh, you know, they're all buff, muscular, doing action movies and all this other crap, right? Uh, Trouble in Little Tokyo, um, Blood Sports, right? All these different actors are were beefy, they're buff, right? Now, all of a sudden, all these new action heroes are just scrawny, right? They're really scrawny, right? You got, um, you know, the only people who are really uh, muscular are, you know, Henry Cavill, uh, The Rock. Who else can you say... Um, I mean, you got some. You got a lot of people uh, who are still kind of, who's still kind of muscular, but they're, they're not to the same size as you know back in the day in the '80s. Maybe because of all the steroids, right, that they probably took back in the day. But you know, but they were at least you know they were scary, right? They were like Buffy. They were like you know the prime masculine hero that you will look at, right? When you look at Nathan Drake on the actual cover of uh, you know Uncharted series, or actually you play the actual game, right? The guy is a little is tall. He's a little bit more muscular. Than Tom Holland. Tom Holland is literally like a, it's a stick, right? He works for Spider Man because Spider Man it has to be agile, right? He has to be agile, so he has to be like that, you know, a certain like uh, figure to be as agile as he is, right? Tom Holland again just looks like a kid, right? That's it's kind of the, the role he always plays. Um, you know, you always have these uh, actors who always play like high school kids because they kind of look, they still look like they're in high school. They're just because they're that small. They're, they don't, they're not, uh, you know, beefy. They don't have full grown beers. They look like little kids. Okay. So they can still, even though they're like twenties or in their thirties, like, um, what's his name? Uh, try man. What's his name from uh Disney channel, right? He played uh, Hannah Montana. He played, uh, Hannah, uh, Miley Cyrus's brother, right? That guy was like 30 years old playing a high school kid. And right? I, and I never knew until I looked it up. I was like, yo, this guy is like 30 some years old, but the, he looks, he, you know, he's cause he's short, he's short. And he looks like a still like he can play a high school kid. OK, this is the type of people like the new type of action heroes you're getting now. Uh, you know, not trying to make fun of people, but, you know, you, you're getting like really small, um, not very muscular male characters to be action heroes. Right. And it's like, yo, that's unbelievable. I need my buff Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone uh, type people going in there, whooping ass, uh, taking names. Right. Because that's more believable. Right. You know, and then on top of that, you know, Sony is now pushing for Horizon Zero Dawn and Gran Turismo adaptations, okay? So, you're, I don't know how Gran Turismo, <laughs> right? Like, that's just like any sp sports, like, like how, how are you going to, you know, Gran Turismo has doesn't have a story. It's literally just a racing game. So, how are you going to make that into a live-action adaptation, right? You can already just sit down and just watch an actual, uh, like, sports car race, like, are we going to follow a character as they're trying to become the, the, the next top uh, racer or whatever? You know, I'll, I'll think you, you might get the NASCAR fans, but as far as, you know, people who actually want to sit down and watch a story about some guy becoming a, a super sport car racer, that, that kind of just sounds lame. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn, maybe, right? You might get an animated series or because I can't really see a live action series being made. It's just going to be janky and terrible like all the rest of these shows are, right? But let me know your uh your 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 opinions down in the comment section below and like always like share subscribe stay safe stay sane be vigilant and i'll see you patriots on the battlefield